In this Orange is the New Black season six review, we're gonna be talking about Daya's drug addiction. I am a recovering drug addict, so I have a little bit of a reaction to how they portrayed it, so make sure that you stay tuned. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And welcome back to another video where I'm talking about Orange is the New Black season six. It's a great show, I love this show. And if you're new to my channel, I am a mental health channel and I also talk about addiction and things like that. I've been clean from drugs and alcohol for six years now. And what I try to do with these videos is I try to make it so when we're watching this different type of uh, content, you know, whether it's YouTube or Netflix or movies or TV shows, whatever it is, like what lessons can we learn from it? So as a drug addict in recovery, something I'm always doing, whenever a show depicts drug addiction, I always wanna see like, are they doing it well? Are they perpetuating a stigma? Are they perpetuating any kind of misconceptions about drug addiction and things like that? So I wanna talk about what happened in season six of OITNB, all right? so. Um, there will be some spoilers, not like major spoilers, but eh, whatever, go watch the show, come back, whatever you gotta do. But anyways, so Daya in season six, she is uh, dealing with the wreckage of her past. Like this is something that all the characters are dealing with. I will link up in the info card the last uh, video I did. Like one of the overarching like uh, themes of this season is like dealing with stuff like these bad decisions that you made and dealing with the consequences and stuff like that. So anyways, so Daya, she ends up getting charged with a bunch more stuff, which pretty much extends her, her sentence for indefinitely, right? And this is a result of the prison riot and things like that. She's actually the one who um, held the gun in the first place that kind of kicked this thing off after Poussey died. But anyways, so in this season, um, you know, there's different uh, blocks and things like that. And that's not too much of this video, but Daya gets introduced to a new character referred to as Daddy. And she used to be like uh, a pimp, for lack of better words, uh, on the outside. But now on the inside, she works right underneath Barb, who pretty much runs that block, and she peddles drugs, uh, specifically prescription opioids. I believe like their primary drug is Oxycontin, all right? So anyways, like one of the things that's messed up in this season is like now that they're in max, like a lot of these women are getting beaten by uh, the COs and stuff like that. So Daya has been getting beaten and uh, daddy comes up to her and she's like, yo, I got some pills for you. And, and she's just playing nice with Daya. Like, and in prison, like, you gotta kind of be wondering, like, what are you trying to give me? Like, what do you want in return and things like that? Uh, Daya pretty much was just, uh, you know, daddy's little play thing. Like, you know, she found her attractive and things like that. So <clears throat> Daya turns it down multiple times and then finally Daya takes the oxy. And, <clears throat> This kind of sets off a series of events. So Daya develops an addiction. So we'll talk about that in a second. The first thing that I wanna talk about, like how they depicted it, and this isn't the show's bad. Like the show didn't do anything wrong, but when I was watching this with my girlfriend, I just told her like, I find it really interesting. Like you see it coming from a mile away. Like as somebody who is in recovery and as somebody who watches like different shows and movies and things like that, like once this character gets introduced to drugs, you know that they're gonna become addicted. And what I was telling my girlfriend is interesting like not everybody develops an addiction like so many people out there like if you go to some of my other videos like a lot of the negative comments like think that i'm like saying that oh if you touch this drug you're gonna become a drug addict and like that's not the case that's not the case at all like one out of every 12 people develops a drug or alcohol addiction like it's not the case at all but i find it interesting that shows make it seem sometimes like okay you tried this drug now you're hooked and that's kind of what happened with diet i'm like It'd be kind of interesting if Daya took these medications to deal with the pain after getting the snot beat out of her by the COs and then she stopped using them. Like, that would be interesting, you know what I mean? And, but like, that's just like me being nitpicky and stuff. Like, you just, you know it's coming. And in a sense, that kind of does perpetuate this stigma and I think it might be why so many people push back on this whole like, don't give opiates or opioids to anybody, especially who are in chronic pain, because there's kind of this idea that anybody who tries them will become addicted. That's not always the case. Let's talk about Daya's addiction. So as, as a recovering drug addict, like so much of it, like it, it was real, like they did a great job showing it. And here's why, for those of you who aren't educated about addiction or you're not an addict in recovery or anything like that, like hopefully you share this video because they showed what can happen. Like this isn't just like making a bad 
choice. So if you get into the mind of the character of Daya, like things have been going bad for her for a long time. So she is the child of, you know, a mother who, you know, always uh, was dating drug dealers and things like that. So like from a young age, Daya's has already been around it. And one of the leading risk factors for developing an addiction is being around that stuff constantly when you're at a young age. So that's one thing that she had going for her. The next one is uh, her baby. So not only did she get impregnated by a CO, but this dude just straight up and left, okay? So that's another thing, right? Next, she had to give her baby up for adoption, okay? Next, after that, Daya gets an additional sentence added on to her original sentence. And there's much more that I can't even remember right now, but these things start stacking up. So in prison, especially in this character situation, I could see how hope is lost, right? When you're feeling hopeless, and the three reasons people use drugs or drink alcohol is to get a feeling, to get rid of a feeling, or to have an escape. And I can see Daya having all three of those, if not just to get rid of a feeling and to have an escape, right? Like. You're stuck in prison, you're gonna be there forever. So I can see Daya just saying, screw this. Like, I'm just gonna use drugs. Like, I've, I've avoided it, I haven't liked drugs and things like that, but whatever, I'm gonna start using and abusing these drugs. Like, the only thing I'll say that the show could have done a little bit better is if they showed how this thing can like sneak up on you. But with Daya's, it was a really, really fast progression, okay? And one thing, okay, so I guess there is one thing I don't think that they did very well. Um, Daya was like physically dependent on these drugs after a very short period of time. That doesn't really happen. You gotta be abusing drugs like in excess um, for a while. Like even if you're getting a standard dose, it's gonna take a while to become physically dependent. Your body has to change its internal chemistry to think that it needs this substance in order to feel well. And for Daya like, her full-blown dependency happened like in a matter of days, maybe, maybe weeks, but she was dependent very, very quick. So anyways, what ends up happening is the supplier um, ends up not being there anymore, right? Well, he's still there, but he can't supply drugs anymore for whatever reasons. Um, there was this little rat infestation joke that they played and all this other stuff, that's not the point. But anyways, so they can't really get these drugs anymore. So anyways, uh, daddy ends up showing Daya the secret stash of Barb. So Barb, for those of you who don't know, she's like the head gal in charge, right? Like she calls out hits, like she's like the ringleader, she is the head boss, okay? So daddy ends up giving Daya some of the secret stash from this little cleaning closet, okay? So daddy is faced with this dilemma because so many people are fiending, and I'm gonna talk, touch on that in a second. So many people are fiending, and she ends up giving uh, Daya a little bit of Barb stash, but, when Daya wants more and Daddy's not getting more, Daya ends up making uh, the insane decision to go in there and steal from Barb, okay? And like, this is very real. Like, this is real. Like, when you become addicted to a substance, you put yourself in danger, right? You put yourself in danger in ways that you would have never done before because you need it so bad. So Daya was literally, literally putting her life at risk to go steal drugs. Not only that, but she was putting Daddy's life at risk by going to steal these drugs from Barb. Like, Barb could have put a hit out on them like that, okay? So that is very realistic. Like, I don't think people understand. Like, when people are like, oh, addiction's just a choice. Like, we do so many things that we know is wrong, that we know is dangerous, but we do it because we don't know what else to do, okay? So they, they portrayed that really well. Like, she went to crazy lengths. But anyways, I think the other thing that they did really well was showing all of the other inmates who were struggling with withdrawal and how they were constantly nagging uh, daddy for drugs. Like, when are you getting them? When are you getting them? What's going on? And you can see them getting more restless and they're getting more irritable and you know they're getting very angry and things like that like yeah that's some real stuff like I went to a detox center and like it, it's like that you know like constantly people were at the nurses station like trying to figure out ways to manipulate and get different drugs and things like that oh I need this you don't understand they get very angry and agitated you might have already seen this like at, uh, at maybe a pharmacy counter like if somebody's prescription didn't go through they get really uh, agitated so I think Orange is the New Black did a good job with that um but anyways overall on a scale of 10 i think they did you know maybe a maybe a seven we'll give it a seven they did a seven out of ten on depicting addiction and things like that i just had a few little gripes but anyways i hope um you like this analysis if you did like please give it a thumbs up let me know if there's any other characters or storylines that you want me to break down i got a couple other ones that i'm doing this week but i would love to hear from you um but 
I would also like to hear from you if you think they did a good job showing addiction on here, all right? Again, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here, I'm always making videos to help you out with your mental and emotional well-being. Go ahead and click that little round subscribe button. And a huge, huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. As you can see, there's a new name on the list. Somebody signed up for just a dollar. Just a dollar, that's it, all right? But. That's all I got for you. Go ahead and click or tap on one of those thumbnails if you wanna check out some more content on the channel, and I will see you next time.